So in part one of this tutorial, we had a look at how to customize Nuke through our home.nuke directory, which pretty much gives you a sandbox to prototype your own tools, to install what you want, to play with your settings and all that sort of stuff without affecting anybody else on the network. In this part, we'll have a look at how to set up a facility-wide repository that people can actually share, as well as experimenting with a uh, custom user directory and a show-wide tool repository. Let's have a look at our new facility-wide repository here. I've already set up the directory structure, gizmos, icons, python, tcl. Let's have a quick look. That's where all the gizmos go. That's where my icons go. There's a python module in here, and here's my old tcl code. Here is my respective init py that actually sources all those subdirectories, followed by the menu py that creates interfaces for all those tools. So I'm importing my custom node tools um, Python module that lives in the Python subdirectory. Then I'm referencing three different menus inside of Nuke, the first one being the main menu bar, the second is the right-click menu in the properties panels, and the third one is a custom menu that lives in the nodes toolbar, so it'll show up up here. Then we proceed to actually add the image plane gizmo to the custom menu, we add functionality from the node tools python module into the uh, edit node subdirectory and lastly we're adding our tcl script into the right click of the property panel so this is all set up and ready to go the only thing we have to do is connect our nuke to this repository and the easiest way to do this is using environment variables obviously setting up environment variables is different depending on what operating system you're on. I'm just going to use a bash shell to demonstrate how you could be doing it. So the important part is that you create an environment variable called nuke underscore path, all caps, and give it the value of your custom directory. In my case, that's library slash nuke tools. Like so. And once I've got that environment variable set up, I can now start nuke. Nuke will find this directory and read the init py, find all the subdirectories and add them to our plugin path and also create the items that we defined in the menu py. So you can see we now have our new menu here which pulls in the gizmo from the gizmo subdirectory. Let's just wire that up real quick. And we'll also find the new items in the edit node subdirectory down here, relax and contract connections map to old up arrow and old down arrow. Let's just try that to see if the Python module is read properly. Yes, looks like it's working. And lastly, the TCL command that now lives in the right click menu of our properties panel. So it's up here and that properly runs the TCL script that lives in the subdirectory and spits out some gizmo information. Now let's say we want to extend our setup with a custom users directory that will give people the possibility to actually put all their stuff onto the server into the same location as all the facility-wide stuff without having to mess with their home.nuke directory. So we'll create a users structure here. Let me just close all those other menus. And let's have a look at the users directory. The users folder has a subfolder for every person that wants to use this structure and all they have to do is create a new folder with their login and then they can go nuts in there. So I've just put a menu py in mind to demonstrate how this can be done and obviously with this users structure now we have to modify the init py again to make it part of the plugin path. Let's have a quick look at those additions. First, I'm importing the OS package. Then I use the OS package to extract the current user from the environment variable called user. And then I use that value to construct a path from our base directory, which is library nuke tools users. That's this guy here. Followed by the current user's login name. So that brings us into the current user subdirectory, in my case, to this one here. Then we just double check if that directory actually exists. And if it does, we'll add it to the plugin path. So let's go ahead and save this. And close out of Nuke to force it to reread our main init py. And you can see this gives us a new menu. And then there is a 3D menu 
and that's exactly what my menu py defines and if somebody else will log in they won't get this menu they will get whatever is in their directory if they have one so that's just an example of a users based um, repository so now let's apply that sort of technique to create a show based repository let's say our show root is called slash projects and in there we'll have all of our show directories with all the data in them including a nuke directory that holds show specific tools and in there the usual directories and init and menu pys to manage the user interface and the subdirectory structures once again we'll just drive it through our main init py in the library nuke tools directory so let's open that again and add a few lines so this is pretty much the same as we did for the users. We're getting the environment variable called show. We then go into our directory root, with, which in this case is slash projects. We add the current show that we found in the environment variable and we add the subdirectory nuke. Then once again, we make sure that that directory actually exists and add it to our plugin path. So let's save that, close out and also quit out of nuke. And let's go ahead and set our environment variable for the show. And I'll point that to our first test show setup. This is obviously something that your job system would be doing for you. Again, this is just an example. So now that I've got the uh, show environment variable pointing to test show, we once again can launch Nuke. And we'll now find a new menu called test show and in there we'll find whatever show specific tools we've got so now if I close this and change my environment variable to test show one for example launch nuke again we will get the menu for test show one and the directory structure in the test show one directory is being read and so forth and as a last example we'll set it up so we actually get a menu for all the shows that exist in the project root rather than just the current one so once again let's open our main init py and do some modifications so instead of reading the environment variable I now simply list all the directories in our projects root and then loop through all the directories found verify that the nuke subdirectory exists and if it does it'll be added to the plugin path so one last time let's save this and um, close nuke so it relaunches and rereads our init and now you can see we get all the uh, directories test show 2 test show 1 test show